morning and praise the Lord. Today is Tuesday. I receive you in our daily devotion this morning. I trust that the Lord has been so gracious to you. He has kept you. He has made you uh, even to uh, have that privilege of uh, being alive today. So the great thing to do is to just uh, sit at his feet to hear from him. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that this day you have purpose that we may hear from you. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue to think about issues or things that make us not be effective in our service or things that limit us in offering service to God or things that make us not to be effective in the Christian service. And number two, because yesterday I shared one, number two today, I want to bring across the issue of unforgiveness or unforgiving heart unforgiving heart. You know, uh, the uh, issue of forgiveness and, um, and uh, allow Jesus Christ to speak to your, to your heart and my heart uh, that we may forgive. Because one thing, uh, forgiveness, uh, I, I hear people saying that it is not easy or it is hard to forgive. Why? Because of the injustices that people did for us or even how people came and hurt us, or how people came and even uh, 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 did the things to us. Uh, others even did uh, while uh, they know, or others even did, did them while they don't know. But allow me first to give you a text here. And it's a very common text that we normally uh, say it every Sunday, not even reading, saying it every Sunday, because it is the word of God, and probably it is a prayer. A prayer that we normally make, I have just extracted a portion from that prayer, and probably is a, is a, is a, a, a Lord's prayer, whereby we say that uh, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 12 to 15, it says that forgive us our debt as we also, as we also have forgiven our debtors. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your father will not forgive your sin. That is a prayer, a prayer that we normally make. I've read Matthew chapter 6, verse 12, and then I've jumped to verse 14 and 15. So it happens that uh, when we make this prayer, uh, we are telling God to forgive us our sins or to forgive us our debtors, this version says, as we also forgive our debtors or as we offer, as we also forgive those who have sinned against us. One thing to point out to note is that uh, we are forgiving because Jesus Christ has forgiven us. We are forgiving people uh, their sin or we are call to have a forgiving heart because Christ himself forgiven us our sins. You know, how can you fail to forgive that person who has wronged you and Jesus himself has forgiven you your sins? So one thing to note is that we are forgiving because there is a, somebody who paid the price. There is somebody who did not uh, did not fail uh, to uh, to uh, uh, to embrace us and to receive us back even to his family and all those kind of things. So one thing as we forgive, we are assured that we are not perfect. We are not perfect why? In one way or the other, we might have wronged other people. In one way or the other, we might have stepped on the feet of other people in one way or the other. Probably, and of course we normally say that uh, we have the sins of omission and commission. We have sins that we have done unknowingly. We have sins that we have done knowingly. That's why I want to bring across something that I mentioned some few seconds ago, that even if somebody wronged you knowingly, if this person came and even did something bad for you, uh, in his knowledge, he knew very well that, you know, I'm hurting this person, I'm doing this one, this thing, uh, and it's not a good thing. You are also supposed to forgive that person. You're not forgiving them because they, they, they sin without knowing or they wronged us without knowing. We are forgiving them for the sake of our peace. Get this from me, that forgiveness, and we've been sharing this not once, not twice, a number of times, that forgiveness is for my own good. You who have been wronged, if you fail to forgive that other person, it is not for that other person's good. It is for your own good. You let it go. A very good illustration, and I normally give it out 
probably those who have, uh, have been privileged to live in the village, we have what we call bulb wire. That we are normally used to fence our homes there. And it happens that when you, uh, you hold that bulb wire, uh, bulb wire and somebody pull, uh, uh, pull it from that other side and you have stick to it, of course, it is going to chop off your hand and uh, you are going to, to feel pain and even the blood will come out. But if you release your hand from that uh, bulb wire, at the end of the day, I believe that you will be free. And even if somebody pulls that wire, it will not have effect on your hand and the, that kind of thing. That is the same case with the unforgiving heart or the issue of forgiveness. When we are holding that we are not forgiving, we are being hearted the most. If there is somebody who wronged you in whichever way and you have not forgiven that person, uh, you are the one who lives with bitterness because you know what? Unforgiveness uh, results to resentment. Resentment results to bitterness. You know, you are living with bitterness in your heart. You are living uh, uh, with the pain in your heart. And guess what? You want to serve Jesus. You are coming, you want to serve those whichever service you want to offer, but you have bitterness in you. You have not forgiven. Even if you, you wish to be effective or you wish to offer the good and the best service to Jesus, it will not be possible. Because when, 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 when you, are, you are there and you are doing good for the Lord, you know, the enemy is a liar. No enemy is the accuser of man. He brings that image, brings that thought that, you see, somebody wronged me. I don't know. I know of a person uh, 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 whom, he, okay, he, he was not a lay leader, but we used to incorporate him in the church to preach and all those kind of things. And uh, when he was in the pulpit preaching, uh, somebody get inside the church and I uh, know they had that history. They, they had, uh, uh, they had some differences uh, probably at home because their neighbors, I don't know, uh, uh, I don't know, let me not bring the story of, of, of what happened, but they, he had a lot of bitterness uh, over a certain person. And that person gets in, into the church and the gentleman was there at, at the pulpit preaching. Do you know that uh, when that person entered the church, he tried to continue with the preaching, he was struggling until the time that he could not hold it anymore. And even he ended his, uh, his preaching, and it was, you know, in seven minutes, he ended his preaching that way. So that bitterness, that unforgiveness, that, that, that evil thing, because I call it evil because unforgiveness is not godly. Uh, 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 forgiveness is godly because Christ came, he died for our sin, he forgave, he forgave us our sin and we are called to imitate Christ because he came to forgive us, we too should forgive our debtors, we should forgive those who have a sin against us because the Bible says, for if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly father will also forgive you. You know, you, how can you fail to forgive other person? If, if, if at all, or if you know you yourself, you are not perfect, and you, you still in your imperfection, perfection need God to come through for you and to forgive your sin, and even to make you whole again. He said that if you do not forgive men their sin, your Father in heaven will not forgive you your sin. So this is what normally happens, that you have failed to forgive other person, and you are coming, you want to serve. And uh, basically, because you have not forgiven that other person, you are also full of sin because your father, our uh, father in heaven, has not forgiven your sin as the scripture is, is telling us here. And now you are coming to serve him. So you are crowded with the bitterness of unforgiving. And again, there is, there, there is, you have the culmination of your sin also. And now you want to serve. It is a burden, it is a limitation. Even if you try to be effective, or trying to think. It was a very sad incident. And you know, he was very open later, some few days. He came and said, when I saw that person, I remember what he did. I, I, that thing came to me. I've see Jamu Achilia, you see? And then basically that made him not to be effective in the service. I don't know if there are people who are, that you have not forgiven. I don't know. Because when we shared it in deeper, we understand that uh, we are serving using the gifts that God has given us. And we will give account. And just imagine you have a gift and you cannot serve because you have a burden in your heart. 
you have that bitterness in your heart. You have uh, uh, that person that you are holding. How can you hold a very big person at the expense of the service to God? So as we look forward to seek Jesus, to make us servants, to make us his servants, to make us uh, people who are instrumental in the ministry, let again call him that he may be with us, to lead us, and to make us to forgive those who have wronged us, who whichever Whichever, whichever the situation or whichever the wrong that they did for us, whichever the setback they did for us, whichever, whichever the shame that they put for us, let us forgive them. Let, 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 uh, we let it go and we let God reign in our lives even to direct our path and to make us willing, uh, uh, willing and humble servants ready to serve him with all our heart. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm.